Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we're going to be talking about the evolution of VR games. I've spent the last 5 years enjoying everything VR has to offer from all major platforms, and while VR had a great year in 2020, games have unfortunately begun to stagnate. There are almost no AAA titles to speak of, and recent releases look like we're taking a step backwards. Now I'm going to break down how this happened, why your gut instinct may be to disagree, and what we can expect from VR games in the future. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into this, starting with the evolution of VR games. The first commercial VR headsets were released 5 years ago. They were stunningly new, immersive technology capable of creating experiences like nothing else before. Sadly though, those experiences were limited. The industry was still figuring out how to handle locomotion, and while there was a lot of excitement, AAA developers weren't willing to fully invest in this niche platform. This led to years of simple wave shooters, $20 game demos, and a general lack of content. If you were a VR enthusiast, you had to live through the VR is dead days. Now in our hearts, we didn't feel that was true, but we had very few titles to play. In 2017, VR started to hit its stride though. Some amazing titles were released including Resident Evil 7, Robo Recall, Farpoint, Lone Echo, Pavlov, Skyrim, and Fallout VR. Locomotion was getting fleshed out, and we were now getting full campaign experiences. There were definitely still some shortcomings. The made for VR titles were still quite short, the ported games lacked finesse and VR mechanics, and the overall number of quality games was still very low. Now we were introduced to the highly addictive social application VR chat, but that's not exactly a game. Moving into 2018 only brought more of the same. We had some excellent VR titles like Moss, Budget Cuts, Astrobot, and Firewall Zero. We also learned when it comes to VR, mechanics and immersion is vital. Only in VR can something as simple as slicing blocks with lightsabers be wildly addictive. But this was also the year where VR felt like it might actually die. The hardware was expensive, the games were still mostly short, arcadey experiences, and VR is where many multiplayer games went to die. The overall small player base struggled to keep many VR multiplayer games alive. 2019 is where things finally started to change. Facebook was funding the production of larger games. Indie developers who continued working in VR since the beginning were now putting out really impressive games. This year we had Stormland, Asgard's Wrath, Vader Immortal, Pistol Whip, Budget Cuts 2, Until You Fall, and Boneworks. We were entering the golden age of VR games. Facebook also released the Oculus Quest, which would eventually have a huge impact on the industry. Not to be outdone, Valve also gave us the Index. We now had a combination of hardware and software that brought VR to a whole new level. All of this continued right into 2020, which was a terrible year in general, but a fantastic year for VR. 2020 delivered the first true VR AAA title. Half-Life Alex instantly added 1 million new VR gamers to Steam's platform. VR was taken to a whole new level mechanically, graphically, and finally, campaign-wise. This was a compelling story from a loved IP. Just like the Valve Index showed us the best of VR hardware, Half-Life Alex showed us the best of VR gaming. At the same time, developers were reinvigorated. The Oculus Quest was greatly expanding the VR audience, indie game sales skyrocketed, and this momentum only continued with the launch of the Oculus Quest 2. But this is where things take a turn. For those who've been playing PC VR games for 5 years, 2021 isn't looking great for new games. Historically, development was PC VR first, with a later port to the Oculus Quest. In 2020, this shifted more towards simultaneous development, and now we're seeing titles develop for the Quest first. The problem here is, the Quest has some severely limiting hardware. If your first VR experience was the Oculus Quest 2, you wouldn't think there's any sort of game shortage or limitations. You have nearly 5 years of ported PC VR titles to play, and this amazing new experience is keeping you captivated. But even Facebook knows there's a shortage of new titles. Their own box art for the Oculus Quest 2 included 5 titles that weren't even released yet, and the 6th game was Beat Saber, originally released back in 2018. To help alleviate this shortage, they released two of those titles in episodic style. Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge and Jurassic World Aftermath only delivered half a game. The Climb 2 released 5 months after the Oculus Quest 2, and Facebook Horizons remains in beta. The other major issue is none of these titles were innovative. Now it makes perfect sense that developers will gravitate towards a platform with the highest chance of monetary success, which is of course now the Oculus Quest. 
or more specifically the Oculus Quest 2, but that hardware is still extremely limiting. During an interview with VR Scout, a developer for Warhammer 40k Battle Sister mentioned one of the game's biggest development challenges was the frame rate. Always the frame rate. What were some of the challenges bringing this project to life on Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2? Frame rate. <laughs> Always frame rate. Um. Frame rate is extremely significant when it comes to VR titles, and working with massive constraints like this will lead to concessions. Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, Warhammer 40k Battle Sister, and even Jurassic World are not amazing titles. The first two suffer from poor textures and texture pop-in, which limits the overall immersion, the VR mechanics are minimal, and they are short, lackluster experiences. I personally enjoyed both games, but they were far from the best that VR has to offer. Even Jurassic World, which I really enjoyed, brings zero innovation to VR. There's a lack of VR mechanics, and while it does nail immersion, it's still only 2-3 to three hours long. If you needed any more proof single player experiences were needed, just look at the community's reaction to Doom 3 being ported to VR. Everyone collectively crapped their pants at a 14 year old game coming to VR. When it comes to VR, the only major benefit of this title is its lengthy campaign. The high-end physics that we see in amazing titles like Boneworks, Blade and Sorcery, Half-Life Alex just aren't possible on the Oculus Quest. Graphics are also a huge factor in VR. Immersion is a cornerstone element. The higher the graphic quality, the greater the immersion. PC VR is still the only platform capable of delivering what VR was meant for. Highly immersive, realistic, fully interactable environments. Unfortunately though, the bulk of development is targeted at the Oculus Quest now. Facebook is fully committed to standalone VR, they've discontinued their Rift product line, many new titles are released as Quest exclusives, and if they needed a nail in the coffin, it was the failure of Medal of Honor above and beyond. Facebook is done throwing resources at PC VR, and the technology in the Quest will limit what games can be made. So it looks like we're going to be taking a step back into those 2016 to 2018 days. You might be loving your quest right now, and the current library might hold you over indefinitely. But for those looking for a deeper, cutting-edge, immersive VR experience, we'll have to look elsewhere. Luckily though, hope is on the horizon. There are still developers committed to pushing the envelope. EA surprised us with a release of Star Wars Squadrons, and other AAA studios might jump in and do the same. There's a lot of rumors floating around about new VR games from Valve coming soon. And on top of that, we'll have the release of PlayStation VR 2 next year. So while the rest of 2021 might be filled with smaller arcade style experiences, greatness is still on the way, we just might have to wait a little while. I don't foresee the Oculus Quest taking over the whole VR industry. Yes, it's causing a big shift in VR game production right now, but there are always companies that want to push things further and develop titles on the most powerful platform. We might even get some new hardware released this year that shakes things up. So for now, let's sit back and see how VR games continue to evolve. Okay everybody, that was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I truly enjoy making these opinion pieces. I don't expect them to do as well, and they take a lot of extra time, but this is an aspect of the industry I love discussing. I'd love to hear your comments down below, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Okay guys, I'll see you on next time.